we're going to show you how to detect and prevent oral cancer in the clinic setting and also at home. But before we start, we're going to let you know some important facts about oral cancer. 36,000 people are diagnosed with oral cancer each year, and about 7,900 will die from the disease. Some of the most common sites for oral cancer in the mouth are tongue, gums, tonsils, and lips. Some of the risk factors include age, gender, tobacco, alcohol, HBV. With proper early detection, timely treatment, death from oral cancer could be greatly reduced. Information about prevention and detection can be found in information packets in your local dental office as, as well as on the cancer exam. Only takes a few minutes. And it involves looking and palpating or feeling different areas of the mouth. If you are performing this at home, you, only, you will have to have a bright light and mirror nearby. While you're doing the oral cancer exam, you should be on the lookout for white and red patches on tissue, swollen tissue, color change in tissue, lumps, chronic sore throat, and difficulty in chewing or swallowing. The extra oil and intra oil examination. We'll start with the extra oil examination. We're going to start with the submental, which is under the chin. We'll be using our thumb and our index finger to palpate. As you're palpating, you'll be feeling for any tender or enlarged lymph nodes. After that, you'll go into the submandibula, which is alongside the underneath the jaw. So we'll start with the right side. So you will push the tissues over with one hand. And with the other hand, you will actually cuff and roll the tissues over the mandibula, feeling for any tender or enlarged lymph nodes. Next, we'll go on to the right, to the left side. So with this hand, we'll actually push the tissues over. And with the other hand, you'll actually cuff and roll the tissues over the mandibula. And remember, you can do all these steps at home. Next, we'll go to the um, parotid glands, which is between the ear and the jaw. So I'll be using circular compressions. Fill in for any bumpiness or any tenderness or pain that the patient could be feeling because it could be an indication of inflammation or cancer. Now, I'm going to go on to the intraoral examination. Palpating the lower lip. As I'm palpating, I'm feeling this texture of granite. At the same time, it's still smooth. Now we'll palpate the inner cheek. As I'm palpating the inner cheek, I will be feeling for the firmness, moisture, and intact tissues. Now we'll be palpating the upper lip. As I'm palpating the upper lip, once again, I'll be feeling for that granny texture. Okay. Next, I'll be going on to the other side of the cheek. And as I'm palpating, I will have dry fingers outside of the mouth. Feeling that firmness and moisture and intact tissues. Now, I will give a visual inspection of the entire oral cavity and oral pharynx. Make sure you have an adjusted, well-lit area. And you'll be looking for any herpetic lesions, any red or inflamed throat, be visually inspecting the bottom surface of the tongue. This is the most common site of oral cancers. We'll be looking for the lingual veins that are distinct. Looking for any swelling, lesions, or ulcerations. Next, we'll be looking at the dorsal surface of the tongue, visually inspecting it. So you have the tongue protruded outside of the mouth.
as you're visually inspecting the top surface of the tongue, you'll be looking for moist, pink, or may have freckle-like pigmentations. Also, you're looking for any ulcerations, any lesions, or any swellings or nodules. Next, you'll be visually inspecting the lateral borders of the tongue, starting with the right. You'll be looking for any variations in size, color, texture, any dry mouth that's present, or any ulcerations. Next, we'll be palpating the tongue. So you have the tongue protruded outside of the mouth. Using your index finger and your thumbs. And you should be alert of any swelling or nodules that are present as you're palpating. Visually inspecting the hard and soft palate. For the hard palate, tissue should be firmly attached to bone and it should be a pale pink in color. Now we will palpate the hard and soft tissues. Make sure as you're palpating that you don't slide your finger across. Instead, you should pick it up and reposition it. Now as you're palpating the hard palate, tissue should be firmly attached. And for the soft tissues, they should be firm but flexible. And the notable findings should be swelling or possible of lesions or tumors or maybe even changes in color such as red, white, or gray. And the last step, you'll be visually inspecting the tonsils, the oral pharynx, which is the back of the throat, and also the uvula. You'll have the tongue slightly protruded away from the teeth as you slightly push down onto the tongue so you're able to visually inspect. Any notable findings you're looking for such as the tonsils being inflamed or enlarged or the oral pharynx which is the back of the throat if it has markings of redden or inflamed or sore throat or discomfort such as swelling or eating and as the patient says, ah, uh, a notable finding could be deviates from the midline or is movable. Includes our intra oil and extra oil examination. Lastly, we will show you some examples of some notable findings. This example is a white, red nodule lesion located on the left side of the mouth on the cheek tissue. This second example is a blue raised fluid field lesion located on the lower lip. This is a possible bulla or vesicular. This third example is a blue patch lesion located on the tissue below the mandibula teeth. This fourth example is a vesicular lesion inside of the lower lip. This last fifth Example is a macule or patch on the roof of the mouth. 